So we've set up the relationships to join these three tables together. And now we're going to pull information from all of these three tables, or some of them in combination. So I'm closing the relationship window, and I have my three, que my three tables. So I'm going to create a new query. So I'm going to go to Create, Query, Design. And now in my Show Table dialog box, I'm going to choose all three tables to add to my, my query window. And I click Close. And now I've got my query, so I'm going to maximize this on the screen. And you can see that the relationship lines, which are known as join lines, have appeared, and I still have my relationship indicators for one to many relationships. So I've connected the juice, the country, and the awards table all together, and I have the primary key from one table showing up as the foreign key in another table. So let's say I wanted to list a specific, I want to create a specific query. I'm going to start a very basic query. I'm simply going to list all of the juice, but I want to include the name of the juice its country name, and the name of the award. So I double click juice name, and I double click C name, and I double click A name, because those are the fields that represent the names of the juice, the award, and its country. And you can see that I have only the three fields. There's a check box under each of them. And if I run this query, just to see what the results are gonna be, I see that I have five records. There are five records, but remember that I had eight juice in the table originally, so five of these juice won an award. So here's the juice. I have Sour Apple from the United States. It won the Marketing Genius Award. And I have some Strawberry from Brazil, which won the International Juice Medal. And Daring Dragon Fruit from China also won the International Juice Medal. Now the reason I don't see the other juice listed here is because the other juice didn't win an award. So now that the juice table has been joined to the awards table, the database is going to look for only those records that have a matching A code field from the juice table and then find it in the as a, an A name in the awards table and then it will display that as a result. So that's one of the benefits of uh, using relationships, but you also have to know that about relationships, that the way I have set these relationships up and the way I've designed this query, it will only list all of the juice that won an award. So I'm going to save this as award-winning juice. I'm going to close the query, save it to yes, and it's going to be called award-winning juice. There, and it'll be listed under the queries section in my access objects list on the left hand side. Next I'm going to jump right into a more complicated query using aggregate functions. So I'm going to create a new query, create query design, and I'm going to show all three tables again. And I'm going to hit close. I'm going to create a query that will count all of the juice that won an award. So remember right now I've got all three tables listed together on this particular query. Actually I'm going to show you a little bit of something here. I'm going to remove this awards table just by clicking on it once and pressing the delete key. So now it's not part of this query. So right now the juice is just linked to the country table in a kind of temporary relationship. So I'm going to move the juice table, the juice name down to the query skeleton. And I'm actually going to want to count the names of the juice because the names in this case are going to be unique. So I want to count the names of the juice and find out how many uh, juice I have in total. So in fact, the ability to count or make calculations is done using this feature called aggregate functions. So up here in the top of the status bar or at the top of the ribbon in the show hide group on the design button for queries is the totals button. So it'll show hide column totals in the query result. So I'm going to click totals and now that I have the total button it's shaped the icon on the button is shaped like a big E but it's actually the math symbol of a sigma which stands for adding things together. Down here in this query skeleton, I now have a totals row or a total row. And by default, it says group by. And if I run this query, it's going to actually list all eight juice. So it's just showing me the names of all eight juice. Now that's because I removed the awards. So now it doesn't even care if it won an award or not. It's just listing all the different juice. And go back to the design of this query. Now instead of the grouping, because what it does is it finds each value in the juice name field and then groups it together. So I find all the juice that has the name strawberry and then groups them together, but in this case it only has one particular uh, name 
and there's only one juice that has a name strawberry. But there is a drop down list for totals and instead of group by, I now have the ability to choose from a bunch of different math calculations. So I can choose the sum, which would sum the name of the juice, but I can't add a sum of names. So I'm going to try running this and show you the error that I get. And it says there's a data type mismatch in the criteria expression. Well, that just means I'm trying to add words, so that's not going to work. There is a bunch of other stuff here. Average and min and max are also going to be calculations, but I can count. I can count the different names. So if I choose count, I'm going to run this particular query, and we see that it tells me there are eight juice. So it says the name of this particular field that's created is actually called count of juice names, and that just explains the field that got counted. Now there's a little twist on this query. What if I wanted to count the countries that, actually I want to count all the juice that came from different countries. So I want to display the name of the country, and if I was to count the juice that come from each country, then I'd probably have C name on the left hand side, and then underneath or beside it I would have juice counts on the right. So I could actually th move this column for juice names, which will contain a count of all the juice, and you can see that my mouse, if I move my mouse over this small gray area, it turns into a black down pointing arrow. When it's a black down pointing arrow, I can click once with the left mouse button and it'll select the whole column. So I could actually delete it if I remove my um, a finger off the mouse. But I can actually just click and drag. Whoops, that's a whole select. I actually want to pick up and move. Oh, see that? I can move that column from one side of C name to the other side of C name. So I have in my query skeleton the name of the country or the yeah the name of the country and it's going to group the names of the country and then count the juice so that's how this particular part of the query works the group by in my total row it's going to find names of countries that match and then group them all at once and then it'll count all the ones in that group so it'll count all the juice names in that group of a particular country name so now if i run this particular query I should see a list of countries on the left, and on beside it, I have a list of the juice. So there are six countries, and I have juice a total of eight juice that come from different countries, all listed here. So that's a pretty good query too. Something you might want to take uh, note of. Now there's a little secret technique here I want to show you. Let's say I want to find the average price of all the juice. So I'm going to create a new query. And I'm going to see the juice table. And in fact, that's the only table I'm going to use right now. Actually, this is a, a query on multiple tables. So I'm going to pull out the awards table as well. So I actually want to find the average price of all the juice that won an award. So if it's an award winning juice, it's probably very good tasting. There's a little quick technique here. This is my secret technique. I can type the word average in round brackets and press tab. Whoops, I didn't want to press tab. In round brackets, I want to put the word price inside this, uh, inside the round bracket. So I'll press tab and you'll see that it creates what's known as an expression. So this is one way to calculate the average price. And I click run and it's $3.48. So remember that's only on the five juice that won an award. The average price is $3.48. Clicking back on the design of this particular query, that's really not the most effective way to recreate the query, although it was fast. What I want to do is take juice price, and you can see how it's now showing me the name of the juice table with a period and then the name of the field I'm working with. So here's juice.price. So it's the price field from the juice table. I'm going to open my totals row, and I'm going to display the total row down here in the query skeleton. And instead of grouping by price, I can choose average so AVG is the way to calculate average in access but it wasn't the way to calculate average in Excel now if I run this query remember I'm joined to the awards table so I should get one price average price of all the juice that won an award if I go back to the design and change it a little bit just like I did with country I can choose a name and I'm going to just rearrange these these fields a little bit here so this is a click and drag for a move and now I have a name for the award on the left hand side and it's going to group all the awards together and calculate their average price. So when you're designing your queries, try to keep in mind, first of all, how you want the results to look because that helps you design the query and just place the fields in the right spot. But also when you're looking at a query, 
try to imagine in your mind what the results are going to look like. So what are the results of this query going to look like? Well, I'm going to run it just to see if you're all right. And on the left, we have a list of all the juice names. And on the right, we have their average price. So there are three different juice, and we can see very clearly that Taster's Choice is probably the premium juice of all the juice in our juice table. That about covers all of the details of making complex queries using multiple tables that have been connected together using relationships. So we talked about the relationships, the relationship window, one-to-many relationships, and we've also spoken about primary keys and foreign keys. So keep all those in mind when you're working with Access. There are a number of queries in the step-by-step -step for Access 2 that you can take a look at, and they're really just combinations of all of the techniques that we've learned so far. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your lab instructor, and make sure you get to practice making these queries in Access, because working with Access and creating queries is the only way you'll gain experience and get better and better at doing this kind of work. So enjoy, and keep on learning Access.